Welcome back. It can write poetry, summarise text and even generate ideas. So there's little surprise that three out of four students are using AI to do classwork at school or uni. I floated using it to write this. <laughs> it wasn't picked up. But some <laughs> academics say they're being pressured into passing hundreds of students suspected of cheating in order to maintain their uni's revenue stream. And for more on this, we welcome back futurist Michael McQueen. Hello, Michael. Nice to see you. Um, ethics aside, and that's a tough way to start yeah. this conversation, but ethics <laughs> aside, uh, do, do, do parents and educators just need to understand this is the way? Like, there's, yeah. it, it, they're going to keep putting out roadblocks and kids will just keep finding ways around it. Well, the question is whether you embrace it or not, it's a reality you can't ignore. So what is it, three out of four students are using this? And similar numbers of educators will say they see this as cheating, this is plagiarism. So there's this massive mismatch between how teachers and parents are thinking about this stuff and the students. Well, is, that, is that new, a mismatch, mismatch between teachers and kids? Well, it's, it's nothing new, it's just the, it's the new frontier, isn't it? And because yeah. the reality is it's so easy to use these tools. And it's not just ChatGPT, there's one called Claude, which is catching mm -hmm. on big time. Perplexity is another one. And uh, Microsoft, I've got, got one called yes. Copilot. Incredibly clever technology. So so the reality is the students are using this. You've got some schools that are like, okay, it's a tool. It's like the modern pocket calculator. How do we embrace it? Right. Some that are pushing back. But the interesting thing is the teachers are using this stuff too. Like the number of teachers I speak to, whether they admit it publicly or not, they use these tools to write student report cards and to plan lessons. In right? fact, there's a tool called Toddle that teachers are using, T-O-D-D-L-E. And basically, if you're using that, you're saving two to five hours a week as a teacher from lesson planning perspective. Some really powerful AI stuff there. Yeah. They're also going off into the workplace where workplaces are using it Correct. too. So it's only just setting mm. them up for what's going to come. But there are detection tools to mm. see the scan documents and see if it's AI generated. Are there pitfalls with that? Can they be wrong? They can, can be wrong. Computers be wrong. They computers can <laughs> be wrong. Would you believe it? Um, so they can be wrong. And see, we are hearing st examples of yeah. students who get caught out and they haven't, haven't actually done something wrong. They had an original thought. Correct. They, uh, amazingly. Um, but what's interesting, so yesterday afternoon, there was a whistleblower at OpenAI that said they've actually got a tool at ChatGPT have developed that'll actually give you almost 100% accurate diagnos diagnostic whether an AI bot has been used. They haven't released it yet, but they, all it would take is pressing a button and suddenly there'll be no concern about whether an AI bot has been used or the student wrote it. It'll become very obvious. 100% of the time. The thing is, though, at the moment, until that happens, there's a really cool tool called Quillbot. And um, if you, I don't know if you've heard of this one. So the students aren't dumb. So they'll write, use ChatGPT to write an essay. They paste right. the content into Quillbot that rearranges the words. Genius. So now the detection tools can't figure out whether a bot wrote it or a human did. So, like, it is still a little bit loosey goosey, but it's going to get a lot better in terms of detecting this stuff. Less loosey goosey. I'm going to get back to school. Writing tighty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get back to writing tighty. Uh, schools in South Korea uh, using. AI to personalise textbooks. Right? Mm. What does that look like? So they're basically digital textbooks and it personalises the content. So what you see, the exercises you're given are based on your learning style, where you're wow. up to in your learning. So much more personalised learning rather than the one-size-fits-all model we've used for centuries around the world. So like some really good things with this, but of course, as we say, there's some dangers this as well. This is genius because one of the pitfalls of modern education is it's a one-size-fits-all. And there's, we know, neurodiverse people yeah. out there in the community. So that is one area where technology could really yeah, be 100%. a game-changer. Um, there's also a growing trend where some classrooms are going... Old school. I feel bad saying this, but apparently pen and paper well, well, no, now we no, can officially you, you, sorry, say... Sorry, sorry. What you need to feel bad about is when you said it, you looked at me. <laughs> That's the bit you feel bad about. Uh, apparently schools are going... Old school. Old That's school. The worst bit. Yeah. Carry on, Boomer. It's just when he Sorry. had his quill out <laughs> before us, he was writing. His I used to, I used to <laughs> chisel it into rocks at Bondi. <laughs> yeah. Like, are we going to go back that far or what? Yeah. <laughs> so here's the irony, right? You've got schools like in South Korea where you're digitising the textbook with AI. Then in Sweden, they're trying to remove as much tech from the classroom as possible, like back mm. to books and pens and paper. And there's a whole lot of reasons for that. But interestingly, we are seeing a pushback driven by parents. Yeah. In fact, there was an example um, at a school here in Sydney a few months ago. The school sent home a note to parents saying we want to move from reading lessons from books to an app on the iPad and the pushback from parents was massive because parents are like, I don't want my kid in front of a screen any more 
than they have to be. And if we add that at school but as you well... you know what that kid... What, what sort of job's that kid missing out on when that kid leaves school and well, goes into the workplace and, and, can, and can... No, but can write with a pen and paper, but that's not required in any job now. Yeah, the thing is... Yeah, the, the way they learn is different using pen and paper. Yeah. That's where it gets really interesting. Um, speaking of ditching tech, an increasing number uh, of um, countries, including Australian state schools, mm. have banned smartphones. Yeah. But there's been a whole bunch of pushback on this, S some reversing the decision, in fact. Yeah, so the most notable is in Canada. So they had this you know, big push to remove um, cell phones or mobile phones. They've sort of given up on it a bit because it's so hard to enforce. That's not a really good reason, though, not no. to do it, just because it's hard to enforce. And so you see in numerous um, regions of the world, there is a, like a double down on trying to remove phone, phone from, phones from school. And I defy anyone to make a coherent argument to say having phones at school is a good idea. Maybe safety for parents being able to call their kids, get, get them a dumb phone yeah, that just does here. text. And, that, correct. The brick. Like you've got schools that are doing that now. Yeah. But like the influence on like cyberbullying, anxiety, distraction. I mean, how does a teacher compete with TikTok when they're trying to teach in the classroom? These sounds like questions. The teachers we have are to... on TikTok now, <laughs> I think. Thank you, mate. Good to it's see you. It's a pleasure.